So here we have the heat of the Prince Elizabeth, Hampton School against St. Edward School. Attention! Go! Really upright seating position in the St. Edward School 8. And you see the power here from Hampton moving really quite nicely together. The Cox there in the Hampton boat. Charlie Marcus takes a look over his shoulder and sees the crews are close. Again, a little bit of steering early on in this uh, in this race. It, it I think it's that stream off the island. I think the stream is coming quite strongly. It's coming off the island. It's pushing the crew on the inside on that Buckinghamshire station towards the crew on the Berkshire station. If the Cox doesn't correct quickly, then I think we're in for trouble. Uh, yes, and we've seen it happen in a few races at about that, that position on the course. And uh, I think you're probably right. Uh, uh, still, Hampton are uh, out. Uh, sorry, uh, St Edwards are out uh, towards the centre of the field uh, uh, of the river, but uh, have managed to keep their blades away from those of Hampton. That's right, and the St Edwards School crew have settled into their pace. They've got prop perhaps a third of a length, maybe maybe moving out. Uh, a little more, but the Hampton crew are going to hang in there hard. We've got another famous name in the Hampton crew, Ollie Stanhope, son of Richard Stanhope, and Rachel Stanhope in the three-seat. St Edward's being warned again about their steering as they're looking to encroach and they're looking to give nothing away in this early stage and really take as much advantage as they can of that third of a length, which has now turned into half a length, I think. And two of the, the better credentialed school crews uh, over the last few years, uh, St Edwards were uh, the losing finalist uh, back in 2014, um, and quite a lot of uh, heat on between these two crews because today we'll see one of them uh, finish their regatta and only one will proceed to tomorrow's races. Yeah, that's right, and the St Edwards crew have been pretty brave here. They've taken this on hard. Hampton look like they're trying to settle into a rhythm. They look very smooth. Not sure if there'll be a contrast between the kind of smoothness that we see here. Moving very well together, looking relaxed. Chris Zane in the stroke seat there. Looks a smooth character. Looks like he rose very quietly and calmly. No panic on his face, just a puff of the cheeks as the crew come out here. Uh, they're well, they're past the barrier now and getting into this kind of empty area of the course where there's not much happens. I used to call it the Badlands, where you're out there, there's not much, you're away from the crowd. We've got the crew from St Edwards on the left of the screen. They look like they've got control of this and they're looking to try and get this out. I don't think it's clear water. No, and if yesterday's races are any indication, St Edwards had a good win over the King, King School Chester by four and a quarter lengths, whereas Hampton had a bit more of a battle just getting a length and a quarter ahead of Bedford School in their race yesterday. That's and right, Hampton made hard work of Bedford School yesterday, as the umpire still warning St Edwards, sending them back to their station. It's not Boris Rankoff again, is it? I think it is. Boris is getting a lot of exercise with his right arm. He yeah. certainly is, getting this crew back. And the St Edwards crew, I know they were watching earlier, but they need to know they've got to be very careful, and they have gone back to their station. Yes, there is a, a, a tendency among some uh, crews to think that if you're in the Buck station uh, for reasons related to the stream, you might be better off getting closer to the Berkshire station, but that comes with a certain amount of danger, and the, the umpire is there to make sure that you don't try and seek some sort of advantage, real or imagined. And uh, he's kept St Edwards um, in their station, in the Buck station, uh, on the bottom of the screen. And uh, Hampton holding on to uh, St Edwards, not letting them get away. I think that smooth rhythm of Hampton is just hanging them in there here. They're just staying with the pace. I think there's aggression, um, there's a lot of power. Like I say, you look at, uh, at my old friend Rupert's son, Felix Obholzer, in the five seat of that St Edward's eight. He's giving it loads of power with the curly hair. They're a slightly bent inside arm. It looks like they're really levering on it. They're giving it everything they can, but there's a slight smoothness about the Hampton crew that I think has let the Hampton crew start to move back here through this middle part of the race. Yes, this is a great race. It really is a good race. Um, Hampton have allowed St Edward's to take the lead early on, but have held onto them, not not a, uh, overlapping at all times. So um, ready to to move up uh, the three quarter mile singles indicates that it's less than half a length between uh, these two crews and Hampton applying the pressure uh, as they come up towards um, Remenham 
Well, yeah. I think Hampton could feel quite confident now. They'll see those signboards go up. They see those those signals go up on the course that show that the number one, which represents them, is now coming back towards that number two. And I think as they come down, they'll come towards Remenham Club. Remenham, traditionally, it's where it, there's a, the Remenham roar. I think the people there who might support Hampton, old Hampton boys, who'll give them a cheer. St Edward's now being still being steered back onto that station. And I don't think that's going to help them. It doesn't help if the coxswain has to put the rudder on a little. It does slow the boat down a bit. Um, but uh, if they were seeking any advantage, it gets lost very quickly when they have to move away from uh, the water that they might think they'd prefer to be in. It uh, certainly does, like you say, that rudder, it acts as a little brake. And whether it's the little brake or whether it's the additional power and speed, but Hampton Lula, they're coming back now still further. But St Edwards are hanging on by their fingernails. They've been so brave. As we look at them there, Rupert's, Rupert Singfield in the seven seats, trying to keep the rhythm going, trying to back up Hugh Riley in the stroke seat of that St Edwards boat. But now we take a look, and the Hampton boys are starting to glance to the side. They're starting to see, can we make it through up the enclosures? They've certainly lifted their rate. They're, they're maintaining good timing. They're, they're a neat and efficient crew, I think, Hampton. And that's allowed them to jump the rate when they wanted to do it it's not something that you can do if you're not rowing well together to lift the rate uh, on demand and Hampton have done just that and applying real pressure to St Edwards at well, the moment. Both crews are sprinting now for the finish line I think St Edwards have, have held the move they've held the move from Hampton this is fantastic work from St Edwards school they're still looking to encroach Boris may still have to get his flag out again but Hampton haven't been able to take advantage of that move that they made St Edwards have pushed this out we're on the camera on the traditional progress board and St Edwards responded to that big push from Hampton as we're coming down towards the line. Yes, that was a good push, but uh, it looks like it may not have been enough. The crowd's still very involved in this race. St Edwards in the blue and white, ahead of the uh, gold and black Hampton school crew, and St Edwards win that heat of the Princess Elizabeth Cup. And you can see and you can hear what it means to them as the cheers go out. The boys flop in the boat behind them. They know what a race they've had. Rupert Singfield, keep your head up. Don't let yourself pass out as the cheers go up and they celebrate a fantastic win in the Princess Elizabeth Cup for St Edward's School over Hampton School. Yet a much anticipated battle between those two schools and one that didn't let us down. Great racing by both crews and a um, a very good and important win for, for the crew from St Edward's School.